Difficulties with the zoning administrator meeting. Uh, we will be uh, going uh, live momentarily. It's on Jocelyn's laptop. And then I am if you want me to try and log in. Okay. An audio.
We're live. Thank you. Good afternoon. This is the June 23rd, 2023 special meeting of the Zoning Administrator. Um, thank you, everybody, for bearing with us. Uh, we had technical difficulties, uh, and so now we'll go ahead and move forward. The Mendocino County Zoning Administrator meetings will be conducted in person at 860 North Bush Street, Ukiah, California. Meetings are live streamed and available for viewing on the Mendocino County YouTube page. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order at 1.48 p.m. May I please get a determination of noticing? Legal notice has been determined on the matter on the agenda. Thank you. All right, so we've got one item on the agenda, and this is case number 3A, AP 2023-0015. Owner is Russell Green, applicant is Cure Wellness, Inc., Agent is Eddie Lerman, requests an administrative permit modification to authorize a drive through window for existing cannabis dispensary. Uh, as far as the environmental determination, this has been determined to be statutorily exempt from CEQA. The project is located 3.25 plus minus miles north northeast of Ukiah City Center on the north corner of the intersection between Lake Mendocino Drive and Eastside Calpella Road located at 800 Lake Mendocino Drive, APN 168224-31. And before we get started, I'd like to go ahead and uh, uh, announce the protocol for today's meeting. Staff will go ahead and present the staff report. The applicant will then be given an opportunity to speak on behalf of the application and or request. The ZA will then open the public hearing. Speakers will be limited to two minutes each. The zoning administrator asks that speakers limit their comments to items. Uh, uh, should I say the uh, the zoning administrator asks that comments not be repeated over and over, um, and so that uh, everybody gets an opportunity to speak. Once the public comment has concluded, the applicant will then be given an opportunity to provide closing comments, uh, and then the zoning administrator will then render a decision. Uh, as far as the appeal process, it is noted on the um, agenda, and I'll just go ahead and read from the agenda. All persons who are dissatisfied with the decision of the zone administrator may appeal the decision to the Board of Supervisors. An appeal must be made in writing along with the fee to the clerk of the board within 10 days of the zone administrator's decision. The appeal will be placed on the next available board agenda, and the appellant will be agenda. notified of the time and date. Appeals to the board do not guarantee the zone administrator's decision will be overturned. In some cases, the board may not have the legal authority to overturn the decision. So I just wanted to go ahead and lay all that out. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to staff for a staff report. Thank you. 
Uh, before going into the staff report, though, uh, staff, do wish to mention the comment was received from PGE earlier today, earlier this morning, uh, after the cutoff for consideration of this hearing. Um, it was nonetheless reviewed by staff and did not appear to affect the recommended determination. Thank you. The applicant's request is for authorization of the drive through for an existing cannabis dispensary. The dispensary was previously allowed to operate a drive through on a temporary basis during the COVID 19 pandemic, but this allowance has since been extinguished and is no longer available. With the COVID allowance no longer an option, the state code stipulates the only way for a drive through to be authorized is if the business had received a local license or permit, which had the drive through component disclosed on the application prior to June 1st, 2018. The applicant asserts that they had previously operated a drive in component where customers would drive around back and be served at their vehicle, and that this was included on the 2017 applications for an administrative permit and cannabis facility business license. Simply put, this is not the case. While they may have indeed operated as they claim, this would have been unpermitted activity outside the bounds would have been applied for. Nothing on the application forms indicated drive through or drive in component. Their assertion hinges on the site plan, which I would like to pull up now. Um, this is page 54 of the packet that was posted to the website. And this is the site plan for their 2017 administrative permits and for their 2017 cannabis facilities business license. So their assertion hinges on this site plan, which shows a gated existing drive. Um, hopefully that's visible. We may need to zoom in a bit if that's possible. Uh, an existing drive around the primary facility structure. I uh, know the lack of any drive through window or vehicle servicing area. Um, the applicant asserts that this should have been understood by county staff to have indicated the presence of a drive through or drive in. Staff disagree. If a drive through had been proposed, additional conditions related to vehicle stacking and septic compatibility would have been imposed. Prior to the 2017 submittals, the applicant had a 2015 business license for the dispensary. This was superseded by the 2017 materials so that they could add processing and micro business, other micro business components. The 2015 application likewise provided no indication of a drive through. Staff has also reviewed the building file for this location, the property, and none of the pre-2015 approved materials show drive-through either. For Cure Wellness to have drive-through in 2023, compliant with applicable regulations, the county would have to retroactively reinterpret previous permits as having approved things that they didn't, that a drive was always a drive-through. Staff cannot support this. As the request cannot be conditioned or reasonably modified to conform with applicable requirements, Pursuant to Mendocino County Code Section 20192025A3, it must be denied. Uh, staff would like to add that several comments in opposition to the denial have been received, and at least one in support of the denial. Comments in opposition to the denial primarily focus on previous use of the drive through. That uh, ends the presentation. Staff is available for questions. So if I could get you to go up to the screen. Certainly. And can you explain the drive-through and the traffic pattern or the other? Uh, I may need to defer to the applicants on this. Um, this is the existing drive. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the site plan for the 2017 applications. Mm -hmm. uh, it is unclear from the site plan where, which direction uh, applicants or customers would be approaching from um, or where they would be served. Okay. If I understand the applicant's description correctly, uh, at one point they would allow customers to drive around back. I'm not clear on which direction, but they drive around back and be serviced from this back area. Uh, and then later during COVID, uh, they had a drive through window, I believe, on the. I don't is want to is, is the right. window similar to, and maybe this is a question for the applicants, is this similar to what you would see at Starbucks or? McDonald's or any of these places, or I mean, the, 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 I mean, it was just a window. It wasn't popped out yeah. or anything. Okay. I mean, probably it not doesn't like, have like an awning or anything. So it's just a window that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. But I mean, you can see where it says parking. That was considered the parking lot, right. and so where he's mentioning the existed existing drive, that's where the existing Could I get drive you to, uh, was say your going. Name for the record. Oh, sorry, Edie Lerman. Okay. Okay. All right. So anything else staff wants to add? Uh, not this time. All, All right. Any other questions? All right. So right now, I will go ahead and turn it over to the applicants. 
And if you could uh, state your name for the record. Yes, Kali Perkins from Emerald Law Group, appearing for Russell Green. Um, as staff mentioned, there is a method to have, even though drive-throughs have uh, not been allowed in recent times, there is a method to grandfather them in, and that's CCR 15025. And this case fits squarely in the second section of that, that's 15025E2. That section, so that section, if this is that section, um, the commercial, so businesses may have a drive in or drive through window if prior to June 1st, 2018, the commercial cannabis business has submitted an application to the local jurisdiction for a license or permit which at the time of submission of the application included information that a drive-in or drive-through window was already part of or proposed to be part of the premises. And after June 1st, 2018, the local jurisdiction approves the premises with a drive-in or drive-through window. So this squarely meets within the facts. Very quickly, a technical comment. Can we speak up? Everybody speak yes. up a little bit. <laughs> so this section around. squarely fits the facts of this case here where Mr. Green applied in 2017, and at the time of his submission in the application, he included information. It doesn't say what information you have to include, but he showed information that there was a drive through window already part of his existing operation. So that squarely meets the language of that section. Furthermore, at the time of that application, um, there is no way that he would have known that he had to disclose the existence of a drive through aspect in his business. Um, there was neither anything on the local or state level that required disclosure of that. And in fact, with the permit he had, he could operate a drive through according to the regulations at that time. Um, so the permitting documents themselves had no place where you could even indicate that a drive through existed. There wasn't a checkbox that said drive through or not that he could have checked to say yes or no, he wanted to have um, a drive through. Uh, so the, the current application now has a very detailed list. I believe it's in uh, 20.243.100. The current permitting guidelines have a very descriptive li list of what information needs to be included. Mr. Green didn't get that very uh, detailed list of what to include or not to include. So he was doing his very best to provide accurate information of what was occurring at the time. He had no way of knowing that several years later, drive throughs would be outlawed, and thus he had to make this very much more specific in order to get that grandfathered in provision. So it's essentially saying because he was not a predictor of the future, he failed to meet the standard. Um, I think also Mendocino County has a really bad name when it comes to cannabis. We have harmed cannabis cultivators in so many ways. The ideology of the department has been to exclude people from the program. Um, at every opportunity. In recent times, Mr. Burks has taken over and has made it much more inclusive and more compliance-based, and they've tried to find ways to include people instead of trying to find ways to exclude people, and that's the attitude that Mendocino needs to have. This is money that could be coming into our county, and Mendocino is making an affirmative decision. Even though they have a pathway to approve this, they're making a decision not to allow it. That would end up with Mr. Green being put out of business, um, not being able to have this drive through that he has operated for so many years. And as you can see, there are hundreds of patients that have benefited from his drive through, many of which have mobility issues and are getting cannabis for medical reasons um, and would not otherwise be able to get out of their car and obtain this medicine that they need. Um, they probably have to send someone else or obtain it through other means. Um, so based on the fact that there's a very clear statute that allows for the county to approve this. And based on the fact that we really need to start helping cultivators to um, join the program in a lawful way and to conduct business lawfully, uh, because it'll be a great benefit to our county. Um, and based on all of Mr. Green's efforts um, in trying to run this dispensary and this drive-through, I would ask that uh, his drive-through request be approved. And I just kind of want to add that when staff... Could you state your name for Oh, sorry, record? Edie Lerman. Um, when staff just stated 
the, the rule to use, they use the word disclosed, which I think is really important because there's a difference between number one and number two of E. And number two is the one that we're trying to fall under, not number one. And number one requires this disclosure. But number two, really, could they could have used the word disclosure, but they don't. Instead, they say included information that a drive-in or drive-through window was already part of. And here, we have an open and notorious operation of drive-through. There's all these people that are saying, we use the drive-through. County comes by, um, the Cal Fire comes by, they do inspections. The drive-through is operational at that time. So this requirement of disclosure is not in number two. What is in number two is saying included information. Well, that information could have been gathered when the county came to do inspections. He was openly and notoriously running this drive-through where we have hundreds of people saying that that's what was going on. And I think you're in a unique position and a difficult one to say, you know what, it's time to start saying yes to cannabis businesses operating in Mendocino County um, under the rules and protocols that existed. And perhaps taking a little responsibility for not having applications that required more clear disclosure if that's what the county wanted. But that's why this other condition number two is here. And I really respect the county staff's position on the matter, but at the same time, we fully disagree. And we think that there's enough here to um, make sure that he's allowed to stay in business. We have a casino about to open a dispensary that's not gonna bring any money at all into the county. They're going to have a drive-through. Who's going to go to Cure Wellness a half a mile down the road when they can just use the drive-through at the a casino and not even pay taxes, most likely. So I, I just think you're in a difficult, unique position. If there's any questions we can answer to make your job easier, we'd be happy to do that. Can I make one more comment too? Um, as for the staff report, he commented that he was operating this drive-through outside uh, what his permit allowed. And that's not true. At the time, he, he would have been able to operate a drive-through with the permits that he had. Um, the other thing is that they said, you know, they would have imposed additional conditions. Well, you can impose those additional conditions now. You can require the septic upgrades or whatever. You can uh, require the car stacking uh, guidelines and all of that. So it really would be no prejudice to Mendocino County to allow him to continue with use. Sir, did you have to, did you need to add? Oh, just if you state your name. Yeah, my name's uh, Russell Green. I'm the founder and CEO of Cure Wellness. Um, I'm just going to read a couple quick things off of the written statement that I submitted. Um, the first one is, uh, in the final statement of reasons when 5025G was implemented, in the final sentence, it says, quote, this allows licensees who already have invested in this practice to continue those operations, end quote. I am one of those licensees. I spent money and time relying on the understanding that I had applied for all available cannabis uses on the property and would be able to continue my historic use as defined by the continued operation clause. We definitely did serve drive through customers in 2018 and before. And the other uh, fact I would like to add is that um, that the Cure Lake Mendocino dispensary back under Prop 215 was not only a simple retailer. It was a vertically integrated dispensary with all the uses we are licensed for now and then some already occurring. There was no net expansion of uses during regulation uh, as alleged in both staff reports. Um, I'd also like to add the original uh, site map. Uh, the main building has on it uh, written multi-use cannabis facility. So if that was good enough for all the other uses there, it's seems reasonable to me to believe that that could have been construed to include information that a drive through might exist there as well. That's pretty much it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you for the information. It's very helpful. Um, so now I'll go ahead and open up the public hearing and we can hear from speakers. So I'm not sure if Adrian is bringing someone. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're listening outside. And... Mm 
then once we hear from the speakers that are physically present, then I'll go ahead and let folks in on the Zoom who would like to provide public comment. Come in. No, just Scott and Glenn to start. Here's your first. All right. Come on in and pick chairs. We pass those to Jim, those, or unless you want to see the names. Yeah. Your first two. All right. So, as I mentioned before, um, you'll each have two minutes to provide public comment. I'd ask that we not get repetitive comments. So if there's something different, I'd like to hear that. So we'll start with the Mr. Ward. Good morning, everybody. I'm Scott Ward, Scott Ward Company. I have helped Mr. Green with several projects here in Meadow and in Lake, and in Lake County. I can attest that when this building was the Lucky Angler, they had drive up service um, through the window and through getting propane there. After cannabis became legal, two of my children, they partake, and they're also involved in the uh, cultivation of it, and they were telling me how amazed they were that there was a drive-through abil abil ability to do it at the Lucky Angler site, 800 Lake Mendocino, and that was probably 2018-2019, but imagine that's when things really started getting warm around here, <laughs> and so I know that, Councillor, that's hearsay evidence, but that's what my kids were. Oh, shit, we can drive through. They got all excited. And I can personally tell you that I would get drive up service at the Lucky Angler when I was getting beer and sandwiches and propane sufficient. And so I recommend that you go support this request. That's it. All right, thank you. Mr. Green. Mr. Green, well, please state your I'm name. I'm Glenn please. Green. I'm Russell's dad. If you look on that plot map that was originally drawn up, I guess I need to apologize for everybody for not writing drive through instead of drive, because that's my writing on there. And I'm not a professional map drawer, and I just ran out of room. So the intent was there. There was a drive through. I concur with Scott that there was a drive through at the Lucky Angler when it was a bait shop. Um, I'm in favor of this project. I think you guys need to move forward on being a, having a more positive look on cannabis instead of an anti-cannabis outlook. We need the tax dollars. Your guys' budget's blown out. Everybody's budget's blown out. We need all the tax dollars. We need to be positive towards businesses, any business, not negative. We are, this is a planning department. Help businesses plan, not anti-planning. This is a who shot John. It's everybody saying this and it's everybody saying that. And you're just preventing tax dollars. You're preventing a business from having an opportunity. You're preventing him from pulling drive through people off of the highway and getting the out of tax dollars and sales into our community. That's a crime that you guys shouldn't allow. You guys should be enforcing this. He's willing to put in dollars for infrastructure to increase the tax base of Mendocino County. If you guys can't see through that, we need a different planning commission because we need positive planning for higher tax revenue. And there's a lot bigger fish out there in the hills that have violations that are actually harming the environment. He's not. Right. And you talk about stacking, go to Cal Poly School. See how the planning is on their stacking. Thank you, Mr. Thank Green. you. So first we'll hear from Mr. Sherman and then from Leslie Graven. Mr. Sherman. Oh, Ash, how are you? How are you? Good. Yeah. Please state your name for the record, and you're up next. John Sherman. I'm the design professional working on this project. Uh, I would say that uh, the first time I saw the project, physical plant project at 800 North Mendocino Drive, uh, 
I mean, the Lake Bend Disabled Drive uh, was in 2018, and it was an operating drive through at the time. But I understand that apparently that's the issue with staff uh, is that wh whether or not it was in operation at that time. But I want to speak to something else here. Uh, Mr. Green has uh, spent tens of thousands of dollars uh, since the very beginning that when he and I spoke of this project. He was under the impression that we were working towards a legal facility, a client facility that included the drive through The drive through obviously serves the community because I've been there over and over and over when, <laughs> for the most part, I would guess 75% of the business comes through the drive through not through the walk-in. Walk uh, we have looked at that site, and uh, what you're looking at is the opportunity to turn an old piece of junk into an ADA-compliant site with new parking structure, new ingress and egress to the public roads that's approved by DOT, um, basically, uh, we, we are proposing to remove all the barriers and to make this place 100% ADA compliant, the complete property, not just the building that the retail uh, unit is in. And uh, the talk with Mr. Green and I uh, from the very beginning is that this is a completely integrated facility and will include everything from production to processing to <laughs> retail sales. Now, like I said, I started on this project in 2018. So that, that has been my viewpoint from the very beginning and all of the design work that I've done on has been to that effect. I mean, nobody really goes into something like this and says, well, let's spend $50,000 making it ADA compliant when in fact it's working right now and we're doing fine. Well, uh, that indicates to me minutes. that that the uh, property owner intends to stay there, to stay in business and to serve the, public, the public's needs. All right, so are we two minutes? Yeah. All right, so everybody's getting two minutes to speak. Turn it over to you. Hi, my name is Leslie Gravier. I happen to be Russell's mom. I'm also the CFO of um, Your Wellness. Now, it's been a long time. I took a college class from many years ago. I, <laughs> I know, I haven't seen you since then. I want to speak on behalf of um, the drive through itself. I don't know. I'm not going to go back to try to figure out the years. When Russell decided that, that this was a good path forward was to open a dispensary, I was extremely skeptical about all of that, um, but encouraging because, for one, he saw something that I didn't. Um, fast forward years ahead, he's got the dispensary going. It's in medical times. People are nervous. The county is growing by the tons, people are moving in, lots of growth going on, lots of things happening. The drive-through was in existence then. It was in existence as I was hearing Scott talk about in the Lucky Angler. We all used to go out to, to the um, lake and we would see the Lucky Angler. We'd go get our bait. We'd go through to get propane for camping. The whole thing, it was in, it was in place. Do we, do we want it to be that today? I don't know, but I don't know why we don't. Um, I, I sent in a, my, my long-winded um, message to the board yesterday evening, but the, the question I have is with the dispensary going up um, north of us and it being on um, the sovereign land, the tax dollars aren't going to come into this county. And I can tell you that the patients and the customers that came through that window for COVID times, when I was in that main office running with staff, we're very grateful. And we had people coming from Humboldt. We had people driving out of Lake County by the Brazilians and a ton of them out of Sonoma County. A lot of them were chemo patients and they would come with their caregivers. They'd come through the drive through The patient could talk to the person in the store and they would um, they would continue to go through the drive through It was tax money that you're not going to get. 
Um, and I think we really need to look at that. It's a it's a very viable viable um, opportunity for the county. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, All right. Next speakers. <laughs> That's it. Do we have any other folks outside? I don't know. Yes, there's a lot, a lot more. Yeah. So they yeah. just don't know. Yeah. They're, they're, we'll send them this direction. Well, I think we have somebody out there bringing them in. So. Okay. Okay. Great. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Perfect. One last thing. It, it was an ex extensive effort to come up with a way to put a drive through on that facility that would create the stacking space. So that the traffic that may build up there would never impact the community out there. Come on in. So um, speakers are limited to two minutes. Um, Rodrigo Cruz, yeah. if you could state your name for the record. My name is Rodrigo Cruz. I have been an uh, employee with uh, Tier One for a few years now. Um, I have watched it go from. Uh, as using the drive through to benefit everybody who can't get out of the vehicle to walk into our lobby. And once that shut down, you know, um, we we haven't seen all those people. We have to wait for them to have somebody available to drive them over there to pick up their product. Um, as a member of the Mendocino County growing up here, you know, um, I've seen a lot of uh, activities for families, you know, uh, deplete, we have no more skating ring. We have no more bowling alley. Uh, I believe the tax revenue that Tier One is bringing to the county is beneficial for the county to be able to have accessible projects for the kids to be able to grow up instead of being able to, um, I guess, uh, fall in the wrong line of uh, growing up in Mendocino County. You know, um, sorry, I just I, I'm in support of trying to get our drive through back up and running. Um, I do see that it will be very beneficial for Mendocino County to have that available for everybody. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Can I say my name? Yes. Um, I'm Esmeralda Diverson. I have been an employee with Pure Wellness for about two years. Long before that, I was a customer. Um, and I personally know that the drive through was super great, especially working for, I used to take care of elderly and having to go run and pick up their order that they would place, you know, through the phone or online. Um, and describing it through the drive through was super, super convenient, especially for a lot of elderly with cancer that definitely need their medicine. So I am in support of the drive through. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Next speakers. I'll go first. And you want to I wish she's going first. I wish she's going first. Okay. All right. I wish. Please state your name for the record. Hi, my name is Eilish. Um, I'm currently she limited to two minutes mm -hmm. each. I'm currently employed with Pure Wellness. Um, but long before I was an employee, I was a very happy customer of Pure. And I want to speak to my experience using the drive through with my mom, who's a disabled individual, um, kind of back at the beginning when, you know, there were a lot of nerves about having to be seen going into a dispensary. And then on top of that, she has a pretty limiting physical disability. So she wasn't always able to get out of the car and come into a location when she could place her order and come through the drive through um, it made getting that relief so much more accessible to her. And I think that other people should have that kind of access available to them as well, not just my mom for that brief period that it was allowed. <laughs> um, I'm here in support of reinstating our drive through and thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Stormy Sargent. I have worked for Cure Wellness two times actually. The first time the drive through was functional and it did bring a lot of uh, revenue in. And again, the tax 
dollars from Cure Do Help Mendocino County. So that's where I'm on the same page of supporting because it goes towards our county, not just that specific dispensary. We're all here together for each other. And I've noticed this time around working in that location with the drive through shutdown, it is a lot slower. There are a lot less customers coming in. And a lot of the people I knew through the drive through were disabled individuals. And I've been a caretaker also. And it does, it limits a lot of people with disabilities to be able to get that type of medicine when they don't want to take the pharmaceuticals that are adding a bunch of side effects and a lot of other problems to what they're already going through. And so I, I too, am here to support the drive through Thank you, Verla. All right, next speakers. Thank you. Thank you. So it looks like we have Joe Carlson and Allison Schwartz. Yeah. All right, you'll each be limited to two minutes. Um, so um, who wants to go first? I can go first. Right. Um, my name is Joe Carlson. I'm a retail and receiving clerk at Kids Corner. And um, it's a location for Cure. And I'm in support of this notion. Um, I'd like to come at it from a customer point of view. Um, which I'm sure some of us will, but basically what happens is you get a bunch of people who genuinely need a drive through um, It's not so much a fact of let's go to the store and get what we need and go home and relax. They genuinely need it. My, my dad is in pain. He's willing to drive all the way to Utah from Lake County just to go to a drive through so he doesn't want to get out of his truck. It's an hour drive there, an hour drive back. It's 15 minute drive to go to Clear Lake. He'll literally go to Ukai just to save his life. So it's a matter of ease for customers. I, I don't even understand why it would be a board issue. So I guess that's my two cents. Thank you. Um, I'm Allison. Um, I'm pretty new as an employee with Cure Wellness, but I have been using the dispensary for quite some time. I mean, ever since I legally could. <laughs> um, it's a wonderful, I think, thing in order for this county to have. I believe the accessibility is wonderful. I'm everything everyone else is saying, the accessibility, the tax dollars, all of these things are a great thing to bring into our county, especially right now. We're being taken over by corporations. It's such a small area, and it's nice to have somebody who believes in our, you know, local community and actually wants to better us. I'm in full support of this drive through. Thank you. Yeah. Next speakers. All right. There you are. We have one more batch written, but I'm not sure if anyone will come in after with one, but I'll find out. Sabrina and Jennifer, and you'll each have two minutes. And could you please state your names for the record? I'm Sabrina Lasser, and I've actually known Russ since high school. And he loves our community and really just genuinely wants to bring wellness. And to keep it short and sweet, I believe that if young, lazy people can have the right and comfort to wait in their vehicles at a drive through, then our community should have the right to sit comfortably in their vehicles if they have a hard time moving around. Why not? So let our community be comfortable while they're already in the back. Okay. Next speaker. I'm Jennifer, and not to be repetitive, but I have a lot of friends and family members who benefited from Cure's drive through long before Coyote Valley is getting their permissions to have a drive through right down the street. And I just think that uh, supporting our disability uh, community is, is very important. And on top of that, we're all local, like locally owned and operated, and we all keep the money here, and we we support our local community. I think it'd be nice if you guys supported us. Thank you. And I support this project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next speakers.
We have one this time. I'm going to see if anyone else is interested. Hi there. Hi. My name's Lily Martin. Um, I've been an employee with CARE for about two months now. Um, and before I was an employee, um, as a customer, I would use the drive through. Um, my grandmother, who has passed away now, um, she, she used CBD products a lot. So I would go and buy her products. Um, and I would just take her for a ride, and she would be in the passenger seat next to me. So she would get to you know, experience a drive through um, dispensary, and that was really great. Um, also, I've used it in the past because I have pets and um, on you know hot summer days, don't want to leave the pet in the car to go, go through the drive through. So I'm in support of the project. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Public comment except for repeats. Okay. Um, let me see if repeats. Are there other folks out there that? Yeah, no. just Glenn. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and ask people online. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll start at the top. We'll ask Alex to. Mm -hmm. Where they go? Mm -hmm. to raise your hand. Yes, raise your hands. Yes. Yes. Raise your hands if you want to speak. I'm now turning to those that are on Zoom. This is Alex Sequera with Minnesota County Department of Transportation. I don't have any comments and that. Uh, you know, we, we did have the comments that we reiterated on AP 2017, uh, I forget the number, but basically for the ingress and egress uh, off of Lake Mendocino Drive and Eastside Capella, uh, those conditions haven't been met yet. Um, other than that, I don't, we don't have any other comments. So while I have you on the line, um, what conditions were established and what conditions have not been met as of today? Yeah, so I have the, let me pull up the, I just had it open here. So from AP 2017-109, uh, standard conditions of approval number, 17 has not been met. And what is that condition? That condition states the applicant shall obtain an encroachment permit from the Mendocino County Department of Transportation and construct two standard commercial road approaches to Lake Mendocino Drive and Eastside Capella Road to be surfaced with asphalt concrete with a minimum width of 18 feet and length of 20 feet from the edge of the county road per county standards A51B. Uh, the applicant has submitted an encroachment permit. Uh, it's been a while, and I was waiting on a con. Uh, they submitted plans, uh, which I have approved with red lines, and um, I was uh, haven't issued that permit because a contractor was never selected, um, and so that's where it stands now. Are there any other outstanding DOT conditions? That's the only. DOT condition we had as part of AP 2017-0109. And the purpose of this condition is basically to uh, upgrade, legitimize the drive approach. What, what, what is the purpose of the condition? To, to make the driveways current to our standard uh, uh, for the flares, for turning radiuses, leaving both uh, and entering the driveways as well as uh, upgrading, um, you know, one of, one of the approaches has a gravelly surface, so it's uh, bringing to our standard of asphalt approach. And these are typical conditions that would be imposed on any commercial operation, correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. And if you could just hang there, uh, I'm gonna listen to other folks, but if I may come back and have additional questions for okay. you. Can you go ahead and promote Jesse Davis to speaker? Mm 
Hello, this is Jesse Davis, City of Ukiah. Um, no comment, just attending to review the proceedings. Thank you. All right, thank you. And can we promote Amanda? And Amanda, go ahead, please state your name for the record. You're muted. These people have their hands up. This says lower all attendees yet, so just making sure. Amanda? This is your opportunity to speak on behalf of this project. Yes, not. All right. Um, oh, she raised her hand. Amanda, go ahead. Can you please unmute? Go ahead. No, we cannot hear you. Okay, we cannot hear you. So I will go ahead and move to the next speaker and we'll come back to Amanda. Am I pronounced it, Julissa? It's Julissa Gonzalez. Yes. Hi, I'm born and raised here in Ukiah. I'm also a mother of a young child and um, I avoid going to dispensaries when I have them because I can't leave them in the car to walk in. And I think it's a great idea to have the window open so I'm able to drive through, grab my medicine and then head home without leaving him in a hot car or uh, in the car unattended. I also believe that this is a great opportunity to include the people that are disabled and unable to walk into these doors. And this would be huge for them to be able to get their medicine and get what they need without having help from others to get in. And that's all. All right, thank you. I appreciate your time, thank you. Thank you very much. And then they're going to bring in a few more. Okay. <laughs> they're on the same sheet because I ran up to your client. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you're limited to two minutes and uh, please state your names for the record. Jason Sill. It needs to be opened up. It would help the parents out, the elderly. Could you speak a little louder? I'm sorry. I do would help out the parents, the elderly, everybody that's not able to go inside all the time. But yes, sir, I do support this. Okay. I'm Kaya. I've been working for CARE about a year, and there's quite a few people that go there for medicinal uses. So I think, you know, some of the people who need it the most can't walk. They can't, they have a hard time, they have pain. So the drive through will help, as well as parents with kids. Don't want to leave them in the car. That's the big part of that as well. Okay, thank you very much. Right. So we'll try Amanda again. Amanda, please unmute. There must be a technical difficulty on your end because we cannot hear you. Amanda, go ahead. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. It could be that. Oh. I want to give everybody an opportunity to speak. There is a, on the agenda, there is a mobile number or a number that, that folks can call in on. The number is 1-66-94-4491. Webinar ID is 822-6800-4454. If you'd like to go ahead and try calling in. And I'll give you a minute or two and... I think we're going to go outside. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it doesn't appear that she's calling in. So yeah. I'm going to go ahead and close the public comment and closing the public comment at 2.38. So I have a number of questions. Um, questions that have come up as to the drive-through. And as I understand, and staff can go ahead and, and clarify, this is an administrative permit to authorize just the modification of the existing permit to allow for the drive-through, correct? Yes, technically it's an administrative permit modification. Okay, so the use, if the drive-through were to be denied, the use still can happen. Correct. The, the, the denial dispensary. of this modification would not revoke the dispensary or the other. Okay. So the, the question um, in my mind is not a drive-through. Uh, I believe planning and building is muted. I am not able to hear anything. Thank you. Okay. How far back do we need to? Yeah, I would start all over again. So um, the questions that I have are uh, the drive through that's in question and permits for the use. Um, is there a permit for the drive-thru? Uh, there is currently a permit on file for a remodel to the drive-thru, um, remodeling the entire facility, but uh, in particular changing the drive-thru to be on the other side of the building um, and have a full-on drive-thru booth, whereas now it's um, just a window. Uh, I was not able to, staff was unable to find um, an older building permit showing uh, when a drive through was initially put in, whether under cure wellness or when it was the base shop prior to that. So there's a question as to the legality of the drive through. Okay. As far as the design, stacking, traffic patterns, and so on, I mean, any commercial business that uh, comes in that requests a drive through. Um, that would all be reviewed as part of the building permit, correct? Yes. 
And uh, if something came in with a business license, um, not a campus facilities business license, just any business license that specified a drive through, it would be looked at uh, the previous permit history to see if that was included or not as part of the building's review of the business license. But in this case, a if there's a building permit for a remodel, would there be a site plan that shows the traffic patterns for the drive through I believe so, yes. And I believe that's in the packet that was submitted and I'm getting nods from the applicant, yeah. um, all of which was included in the attachments to the um, uh, staff report. What is the current status of permits for the facility? The uh, campus facilities business license and administrative permit, the 2017 administrative business permit um, have been issued. Those are active. Uh, the remodel building permit is on hold because it would require the issuance of this administrative permit modification to allow for the drive through. I just want to make one distinction because you're asking. I'm, 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 I'll get to you first, okay. or I mean, second. I'm okay. trying to get some clarifications, and then I'll be, be asking uh, clarifications to the applicant. So, permits, as far as what's been obtained so far, are these permits active? Have they been um, uh, expired? What, what is the history of the permits? Uh, sure. So, the as I said, the 2017 campus facilities business license and administrative permit have been issued. They're active. Um, the uh, building permit for the drive through, which I believe that is BU 2021 2567, although if you want to be sure, I want to double check that, uh, has not been issued yet. It's been received and it's on hold pending the outcome of this administrative permit. Mm -hmm. Modification, this administrative permit modification. And then I heard from DOT earlier that a an encroachment permit was applied for but not completed. And why and I guess I'll also ask the applicant why have we not had a completion to that um, encroachment permit after all these years? Mainly because we need the answer as to whether or not we're going to be able to do the drive through before all of the work gets done that needs to happen to comply with the, that. So they've kept the, the permit current, but the work hasn't gotten done because we're waiting to see what happens. Right. So I'm going to ask staff again to reiterate for the record um, why is staff not supporting the drive through uh, To authorize a drive through now in 2023, uh, there needs to be an application prior to January 1st, 2018. June. That June, sure. my apologies, June 21st, June 1st, 2018, uh, that included the drive through components. Um, and there wasn't. It was the staff's understanding. The, there was uh, a 2017 administrative permit, and there was no drive through requested then. Uh, correct. That is the uh, existing drive that we pointed to. Uh, yeah. The project description of that administrative permit also did not include a mention of the drive through. Yeah, I'm going to ask the applicant to provide some clarification. Yes, I wanted to or clarify what you're asking whether permits existed for the drive through. A building permit is that. Exist um, because back in 2017, prior to December 2017, there was no no prohibition on drive throughs or dispensaries in either state or county law. So if you had a dispensary permit, you could operate a drive through And he did have that dispensary permit. Um, for Is the, that a building permit or a dispensary permit? A dispensary permit. I asked for a building permit. drive through I asked for a building permit. Right, you didn't clarify that. I did. Until that, okay. I did. Okay. And then um, as for uh, 15025E2, um, they're saying that the the dispensary, again, had to be disclosed on that application, and it does not per 15025 
B2, uh, it just had to include information that a drive-in or drive-through window was already part of or proposed to be part of uh, the premises, which he did by the existing drive. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say, I mean, there may have been a building code violation, but as far as the lawfulness of a drive-through dispensary operating beginning in 2015, which is what happened with Mr. Green, that was lawful. I just still have a lot of questions in my mind. Um, The question is that, or in my mind, uh, for clarification, is that June 1st, 2020, 18, there had to have been a drive through applied for. There wasn't. Uh, and now what's being requested today is a modification of the administrative permit to allow for the drive through um, going forward. That's not exactly an accurate explanation of what the law actually requires. No, I'm asking the request for clarification. There was the, the previously in 2017, there wasn't a drive-through requested or clarified. And now the current administrative permit modification is asking for the drive-through. Well, it, what we're saying actually is that it was disclosed in 2017, that the map that was included in the 2017 application included information that they were intending to do a drive-through. And the person who did the map came in and said, I didn't have enough room to write the word in, so I just write existing drive. And that was the existing drive-through that was already in existence. Mm -hmm. um, when we look at the two reasons that are allowed, there's disclosure. So I feel like that's the one that staff's getting a little bit caught up on. But number two goes beyond just disclosure because the the, the people writing this legislature understand that this was essentially, um, you know, a black market that's converging into a regulated market. And so while there may not have been disclosures, there may have been applications that included information. And it's a less strict standard. That's the standard upon which we, we think we provide overwhelming evidence that there was included information. And I even point out there was inspections happening on the property. We have open and notorious operations, and we have the map. All of that shows that this was included as the in the information that was provided to the county. And coupled with that is the fact that if you look at the forms for the applications at that time, they don't elicit information as to whether a drive-through existed. Um, and in fact, there was no guidance from the, the department, the cannabis department, to include information whether or not a, a dispensary drive through was operating. You simply were applying for a dispensary at that time, in which case, if you had a dispensary permit, you could lawfully operate a, a drive through And so it's amazing that he even included that information in there um, because it wasn't elicited from the county at the time. Okay, thank you. Question for council. Mm -hmm. it, it looks like based on what's presented in the staff report that we're pretty much limited to the state regs or how staff is interpreting this as that the drive-through cannot be permitted based on certain cutoff dates and what was on the original application. Am I asking that correctly? I'll answer in a couple of different parts. This is Deputy County Council Matthew Kudrowski. So 15025, does, uh, as it reads now, it starts off by saying there isn't an allowance for a drive-through. Mm -hmm. It gives the exceptions for, and there are two of them but they both have to have happened before June 1, 2018. The first is that if prior to 2018, they had the commercial cannabis business received a license or permit from the local jurisdiction or premises, including a drive-in or a drive-through window, which was disclosed on that local, local application. And here, there was a permit issued before June 1, 2018. 
So technically, I think it might fit under this better under the timing component. Uh, but the, for the issue, the staff is seeing that this, ex this existing drive and what was analyzed uh, as part of that AP application made in 2017, approved in 2018, sufficient to show that the drive-in or drive-through was disclosed in the application. Staff's statement is that no, it was not. And, and it's in part due to the fact that the staff, there's no identification of where a drive-through is occurring on that site. And there's no discussion of the stacking regulations that exist in the zoning code for a drive-through. Mm -hmm. The second uh, provision is that also before June 1, 2018, the commercial cannabis business submitted an application to the local jurisdiction or license or permit, which at the time of submission of the application included information that a drive-in or drive-through window is already part of or proposed to be part of the premises. And after June 1, 2018, the jurisdiction approves the, the, the premises with that drive-in or drive-through window. So under that, the applicant's saying the application it still qualifies. It was still made before June 1, 2018 for the AP 20, in 2017. Um, and this, the information was enough to, to fit under this provision to say that's enough. And, they, and the zoning administrator has a, has a discretion to say that it, it was clear to the department at the time that it should have been considered as part of an application. I think staff's analysis, and obviously all of the staff to you know, so I'm not misstating anything, mm -hmm. is that that existing drive was not enough to disclose any of this. And I think as uh, stated, if there's nothing in the project description and with a discussion of a drive-through, um, you know, to what extent can the lack of information provided I mean any kind of grandfather for things that the department was not aware of? So in essence, what staff has communicated is that it was not clearly stated in the old application that there was a drive-through there. And based on the lack of or uh, the evidence provided then, staff is unable to make that determination that there was a drive-through. I'd ask you to ask that to staff mm -hmm. to clarify that. Yes. Uh, and it's staff under, staff's understanding that had it been included in the proposal, it likely could have been approved with conditions relating to um, vehicle stacking and um, septic compliance and other same thing. Um, but it wasn't. So a separate administrative permit modification would have been required once it was issued to add that in. And we are now past the June 1st, 2018 deadline to do that, essentially. Mm -hmm. Okay. But can I make a comment? Oh, I want to All right. Uh, 15025 e is not required that both conditions be met. There's a very key word in this, and that is the word or. So if you look at E, it says, notwithstanding section A, commercial cannabis businesses may have a drive-in or drive-through window only if prior to June 1st, 2018, number one, which requires the permit, or number two, which is that the information was included on the application. So both are not required to have been met. And number two alone could have been met, which was met uh, because the staff is including additional conditions that don't exist in this law. They're saying it had to have been approved by the county and it doesn't. It can be approved by the county after June 1st, 2018. We are here now after June 1st, 2018, it could be approved by the county. So this again, squarely meets 15025E2. I would and, I would want to speak to that briefly because I didn't see I had to both uh, conditions one and two. That was in, uh, that was implied. I apologize. Yeah. I would say E begins with one of those two, one either of these two things happening prior to June 1, 2018. So I would disagree I with okay. saying that the application that is presently before us would assist with that. I think this would apply only to the 2017 application. It, except that it also says or proposed to be a part of the premises mm -hmm. and. If we're getting hung up on that there was no active permit happening at the time, it certainly was proposed from our position on the map that was disclosed. And for whatever stacking rules need to be complied with, that can certainly be implemented now. For the premises with a drive-in or drive-through window. So we're certainly in the opportunity where if it is found that it was uh, included, which is a lower standard than disclosed, we can overcome this. 
But I, I just feel like, again, staff is making a decision that they're they're not attempting to overcome it. They're not even using the second standard here to apply their logic. They're using only the first standard uh, requiring the disclosure, which is a higher standard. And there's a reason the number two is there. And I, I would urge you to reread If you at the location and they're openly and notoriously running a drive through, we have hundreds of people saying, We were there, we used the drive through. It's included in the information that the county is being provided, even more than just the papers. If the county wants to say, oh, well, we're not interpreting that part of the map to say drive in, even though it says existing drive. And when the county is coming to do inspections, they're seeing an, ex an existing drive through. I guess my, my concern is that there was a permit, an administrative permit. It did require a, an encroachment permit to have been issued and complied with. Um, Building permits for the remodel have not been completed or uh, gone through. It would make my job a lot easier if all these permits had been complied with, then I could say you have a drive-through. But in essence, I don't see a drive-through there yet. Just to clarify, as Rob has said, uh, Deputy County Council Matthew Kudrowski, the permits for the remodel are pending this permit. Mm -hmm. So what there is is whatever the building permits were for the existing building and then the encroachment permit that was required as part of the 2017 permit. Mm -hmm. the per there was no, the permits now are finalized for the remodel because they haven't been approved yet. Okay, uh, so that clarifies. If I can also clarify, um, I, I can verify that that is true for the building permit for the remodel, mm -hmm. um, BU 2021-2567. Uh, as the encroachment permit, um, I'm not sure. Uh, the applicants have indicated that it's pending. And just to point out, it's a huge ask for someone to invest tens of thousands of dollars in their property when it's uncertain whether they're going to be able to actually run the mm -hmm. drive through. And that's why I think you're being very cautious, especially it's really hard for cannabis dispensary operators in the current market. And so to expend this kind of money in our county. Mm -hmm. And um, is huge for him. And I'm sure he would agree to, as a condition of the drive through being approved, to complete that work. Um, Russell Green, just got a quick comment about that real quick. Um, one of the difficulties, like John Sherman had said, with getting that encroachment done is that I was going to lose like six parking spaces up front. Um, so we were trying to figure out a way how to properly get that done. Was was a was part of it. It wasn't. It was. I didn't. I didn't intentionally not do it. It's three o'clock, and I'd like to take a um, five minute recess.
you to remove myself as well. Has to come and touch this, mm -hmm. and then Jim's not even touching the mouse. Maybe it's just squishing. Mm -hmm. What would be the point of a computer slash whiteboard if it is both? It's pretty old. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> somebody thought it was cool years ago. Yeah, that thing's at least seven years old. Yeah. Maybe longer. It's, um, yeah, it's real neat on uh, paper, but. All right, so the zoning administrator will reconvene after a short break at 312. So basically, there's a number of questions. And again, I'm, uh, as a result, I am closing public comment, bringing it back to the zoning administrator for deliberation. And some questions have, have come up as to one, the drive-through is is the question. Was it um, can it be recognized? Can it be authorized at this point in time? Um, staff's presentation has been that it wasn't clearly shown, articulated, uh, put out there um, before 2018. Um, it is now being requested that. Um, the drive-through be considered as part of this modification. The law as it's been interpreted by staff basically shows that um, it wasn't clearly requested. Uh, it's just, you know, basically what's been presented has been assumed that it was always there. I've heard testimony today from the public um, that are in support of the application and the first few folks that testified are saying that um, there was a drive-through there, you know, even when it was the Lucky Angler. 
I find it hard to believe that there was a drive through where people could go up and get propane and, and beer um, in the past. But again, I'm just going to consider that as hearsay. Um, you know, I don't see anything um, from either the applicants or staff that shows that that drive through was always there um, as far as the lucky angler and so on in, in past. But that's not neither here or there. It's what's trying to be legitimized going forward and what's being requested um, here today. I'm in full support of obviously the businesses and trying to make sure that, you know, we keep businesses afloat, but I'm also conflicted in that the request doesn't meet the test of, of the law. It, basically, if, if this had been requested in 2017 and clearly shown as the drive-through, then we wouldn't be here today debating the merits of whether the drive-through is there or not. What we're trying to do here today through this um, application is basically go back in time and say, yes, this really was the intent originally. But we have an issue with the date where 2000, June 2018 has come and gone, and it's staff's interpretation based on the law that uh, it can happen. So I just have the evidence that, that's presented before me. And again, I completely understand that you don't want to move forward or can't move forward with the improvements until the administrative permit is secured. Otherwise, why would you invest in, in uh, all these improvements, whether it's the, the drive-through, the ADA requirements, the remodel and so on, I completely understand. I've been asking all these questions just to get clarification for the record as to what is going on, um, so on. Um, I just don't have enough evidence that this was asked for before 2018. That's really what, what it comes down to is, um, is the use there? And I understand that previously the department had made determinations that um, the drive-through was not a permitted use um, or could not be authorized. Um, so with what's before me, I just don't have enough evidence to support granting the drive-through here today. Um, you know, I just wish there would have been something in the record in the past on a site plan in the application that would have shown the drive-through, then I could have approved the application uh, today or we wouldn't be here having this discussion. So based on the testimony here received today, you know, and this is why I asked if the administrative permit uh, you know, can be approved without the drive-through, and staff has indicated yes. So the denial is is the drive-through, yeah. and so the zoning administrator is denying the drive-through based on the findings and facts contained in the staff report. Uh, yes, just a minor clarification: um, the dispensary, all other aspects of the project have already been approved. And none uh, of this that request was... is just the drive-through. But okay, so I am not you know, wanting to affect the dispensary or any other aspects of the business. Your denial would only affect the drive-thru. The drive-thru. Yeah, and, and through the zoning administrator, um, there is a draft resolution as part of staff's packet. And so the zoning administrator would, would hereby adopt the resolution. And I've seen it here in the packet. In fact, I had it here. It should immediately be following the um, staff report. Let's post it online. Oh, uh, it should be at the very end of the entire packet. Okay. So we have a resolution of the zone administrator 
denying the administrative permit modification for the drive through window for an existing cannabis dispensary. And again, this resolution contains findings, facts for the denial, and the resolution is dated June 23, um, 2023. So, Based on this, um, the request is denied. I would strongly recommend that you appeal this to the board. I do not have, again, uh, the sufficient evidence to grant the drive through. Questions, comments? Um, I mean, I'm in support. I just need the evidence. Right. I just, I mean, have... we've done a bunch of work, and I, I think that. Part of it is the the evidence, like the evidence that you're requesting, where you're saying that that there needed to be a, a mention of it, um, or the standards that you're applying. I think that it's really important that we stick to just the standard of what's here in terms of applying for, and I do think we need it. So if you would like further analysis on that, we'd be happy to provide that for you and we can reconvene another time. I mean, I feel like the county is gonna spend a lot of resources and, and it is our intention to appeal the decision. So if, if you'd prefer, we'd be more than happy to provide further legal analysis and try and get you some more information. There are about 60 more letters that you haven't looked at um, that if you'd wanna consider. I mean, the correspondence is pretty much just saying we need it, we want it, we. No, saying it, it, it was not existence. At that yeah, time. but again, it's it's. I'm going to look at it as as hearsay. You know, it, you know, it's there's. I need evidence that there was something there, and we had people testify that there was something there. Um, and you're saying that they would have had to have requested it, and that's yes. not what the standard in 15025E2 requires. It would have Call been it. in the administrator permit originally in 2017. Well, it just says included information mm -hmm. that a drive-in, drive-through window was already part. And that's what we're seeing that the maps existing does drive. include existing drive mm -hmm. that was already there. In addition to the information that would have yeah. contained your inside inspection. The staff's operating. decision is that that's not adequate. I mean, I think that if it said existing drive in, we wouldn't be here. And so we had the person who drew the map come in and say, it was we our intention, we ran out of room. And here it just says included information. It doesn't say- Intentions were well and good, but it had to have been- But the there. county needs to take some responsibility yeah. too. They don't have any space in the application yeah. that says, check here if you want to drive in or anything like that. So it's fine. We can appeal the decision. That's probably where we're going to go. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And you too. So moving on, do we have any matters from staff? Seeing none, do we have any matters from the public? Is any administrator welcome participation in these meetings? Uh, items that are not on the agenda or have been um, discussed. Um, folks are welcome to um, uh, speak on this matter. Thank you. Seeing none, I'll move to adjournment. And the meeting is adjourned at 3.23 p.m. Thank you.